Ladies and gentlemen, I've got some good news. I don't know who heard the radio uh, this evening. You are part of almost 12 million citizens in Belgium. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> and for the ladies in the room, sorry men, we are more women in Belgium than men. So congratulations also. This has been uh, factually proven, so if you would have any doubts, now you have uh, all financial information, you can uh, certainly connect to that. Now, the, the invitation of tonight was, uh, Saskia, can you please share uh, your experiences with an audience in order to motivate uh, women to join STEM? And then I already started thinking and saying, oops, I may be not the right reference because I didn't do neither science, neither technology, neither engineering, neither mathematics. And indeed, like you mentioned, um, the first thing which happened in my life is that I'm the, we are six at home and I've got five brothers. That maybe already influenced a little bit my behavior uh, in my education. But at the other hand, uh, after my uh, uh, secondary I wanted to do something and my idea was I will go and educate kids because the kids are the future and that's where we have to invest in. And yes, I did physical, integration, in the, uh, physical education, I can say it helps a little bit in order to survive in this uh, hectic world. But at the end of the day, I didn't do physical education in order to be in front of a classroom although it helps because if you can explain it to kids, then it helps also to explain it to adults. So it's a good base in order to progress in your career. But at the end of the day, my goal was to organize holidays, sporting holidays for kids. That was my vision of life. And then after my studies, I started to reflect and I said, whoops, if I have to uh, organize something, yeah, then you have to motivate people, you have to rent buildings, you have to negotiate the insurances. You have some financial aspects. You need to ask for some allowances. So you also need to create a company. I said, oops, all those elements I never learned in school. But then it helps if you don't learn it in school, you always have to have good friends. And it was a friend of mine who started a company in IT. You must imagine 1832 when I stopped my school, we didn't have any PCs. Remember? Maybe you've read about it. There weren't any PCs. We even didn't have any spreadsheets. So we sold thousands and thousands of Belgian francs in order to create a spreadsheet. It costed a fortune to the customer only to have a list of 10 numbers and then make a graph out of it. Great. But that were the days. So as I didn't know anything about technology, so what did I do? The guy rented an office, but the, the office needed to be painted, so I started to paint. Because we needed to have a showroom. If you want to have customers, then you need to have an office, you need to have a showroom. So I started to paint. And then after the painting, yeah, the first customers came, and they were invited. And, and do they want a cup of coffee? Then who brought the coffee? So I served the customers. And at a certain moment, my boss came and said, yeah, but we are a small company. Everybody has to do a little bit of everything, so now you're going to go and sell. Gave me a list, something which doesn't exist anymore. A big book with telephone numbers. Start prospecting. So I called my first call, and my second call. So my first customer had a bad stomach, didn't feel right, did a lot of errors. And then years and years and years went on, and yes, I stick to the ICT sector. I've joined local companies, I've done international roles, I've started up a subsidiary in Russia, Eastern Central Europe, but all sales and marketing. But I had a beautiful life, and why did I have a beautiful life? Because every day is different. If you work in the IT, you are connected with everything. Every solution is different. You can do logistics, you can do finance, you can do technology, you can do education, you can care about health. The only sector 
which is in the heart of everything, is the IT sector. Because then you are part of the heart of the world. Because it's IT who really makes it work. And still my kids are laughing and saying, Mom, if you need to upgrade your smartphone, you just have to push the button. So do I already know more about technology? No. But that's not my value add. I've discovered that I may be better in helping companies to change, helping business models to go from an old way of working to a new way of working, helping companies who are selling products and, and how to can sell services. I've been in situations where we had acquired a company and then suddenly you have to integrate a strange number of people who think differently, who are differently, where everybody thinks I'm the best. And then you get, need to work on a smooth organization. I've worked, I've been acquired, which is a completely different position because then the other side of the company thinks they are better. So I'm still not a technical person. However, what I've discovered, if you are not, if you are still doubting, if you need to be part of the STEM world, it means that you're still doubting if the digital world is a reality, yes or no. And I had a discussion lately, a week, two weeks ago, with a 50-year, 58-year-old entrepreneurial. And he said, yeah, but Saskia, the digital world, it's like a clock. It goes tick, tack, tick. And now everybody is talking about the digital, but you know, it will stop one day. So if you're still thinking that this digital world will stop, then maybe you can better join another session of TEDx. If you're really convinced that the digital world is the center of what we will all live tomorrow, then you should stay here. We've chosen a new pope in 2005, just a, an exercise. Find the seven differences between this slide and that one. This is not discussable anymore. This is reality. Now, as we are in the university, we'll go to facts and figures. It took us 100 years to connect 1 billion places. It took us 25 years to connect 5 billion people. And see where will we go? And just for your information, if the slide is too small, it's 2020 who is marked, so that's tomorrow. In 2020, we will have 50 billion connected devices in the world. And this is what STEM is about. If you want to be part of that heart of the world, then that's the decision you have to take. You have to take the decision to go and to take initiative and to be part of the Different activities you can do. We went with, with, with the kids at the year end to the seaside. For me, it was great. There was no Wi-Fi access. For them, it was a little bit less. But I've realized that broadcast TV, they don't look TV anymore. We live in a sharing economy. The taxi drivers of Brussels are not happy. We live in a world where a car can drive without a driver. We live in a world where we have connected bikes. I mean, we've made a bike where you have your headset. And if you're driving on your bike and a car is coming, then red lights start blinking on your headset. Then you can say, is that technology? Yeah, it's a technology with a goal to have a safer world for kids driving bikes. So those trends are there. And we need people who dare to think disruptive. We had uh, the car uh, party every year in the Hazel. Yeah, we sold the largest number of cars. I mean, this is the business model of yesterday. We all know that tomorrow we will sell less cars. Although we still have a lot of people focusing on, yes, we need to sell cars. Maybe you've read that there is a collaboration agreement between Volvo and DHL, where your package of uh, Z uh, uh, no, can be dropped in your car while you're here. 
Now, who is the car vendor? Who is the software company? Who is the retailer? So you will all be part of that disruptive world. Nothing will be any more like it is today. So we do not only need technical profiles. Yes, we need women and men in STEM. But we need also profiles who are capable of making sense of all the data that will be available. We also need people who dare to think differently, who dare to recreate new business models, who dare to say that maybe the way of working of yesterday, the economy has already proven not to be very efficient anymore. We need people who create new platforms, who, who think in an innovative way, and that's why you need to join that world. Just a reflection on 2013. 2030, we will, have houses, we will have houses who create more energy than they use. We will only take our car as an exception. The drones and the 3D printing will be tip-top supply. You can imagine the impact on logistics and warehouses and those kind of things. That's the world where you can be part for of if you are if it, part of the STEM realization. But it's not all good news, and I also do realize that. 50 billion connected devices creates also a risk. If you don't close your house, then everybody knows that you take a risk. Although the online world, we're still not discussing. And it's not a discussing privacy, because if I talk with kids, they all do realize that the information is shared, but what we should urgently start working on is an ethical way of using that data. And that should be the discussion, and that should be the job of the people who are creating the new companies. Because we do it for the kids. We do it for the next generation. I don't have to do it for myself. I have to do it in a sustainable way, so we create a way of world. And it's not easy. I must admit, it's not that I was born and then everything was ready and I just walked on the path and then I was CEO suddenly and I said, thank you. It didn't work that way. And yes, the terminology of work-life balance is something which I get every time. Oh, Saskia and this and this. I was a discussion with a with 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 young kid of, of 18. He said, I don't understand the terminology of work-life balance. The question is, how can we integrate our work in our life? That's the real subject. And by the way, that's as valid for men as for women. How can we integrate our, our work in our life? Knowing that we will not have a life where we are born, we go to school, we educate a little bit and we work, and then at the end, at a certain moment in time, we start enjoying life. I think that's not a life where you will be part of. And yes, it helps me a lot. And I must admit, for the women in the room, it's much easier to have a management position as a mother than as a father. Because if I'm not predictable enough, and if I'm not present, then the kids give immediately feedback. And I can imagine some men who have international careers and they come back 20 years later and they ask at the breakfast table, who's that guy? I can imagine that. But it is feasible as long as you make choices. Yes, I've done physical education. Do I still do a lot of activities? No, because I'm standing here. Am I happy? Yes. And mindfulness, I do in my garden during the weekend. It doesn't cost a lot, and it also refreshes ideas. So it's also a way of mindset and a way of managing the project. But the kids help because for the first time, we will be part of four generations in a company. It means your grandfather, your father, the son and the grandson at the same time, five days in the wake, all noses in the same direction. My family doesn't always happen like that. But that's real life. So it's not only about technology, it's not only about digital, it's also about attitudes. How will you behave? What will you do in order to change what will you do in order to become the leader? And that's an initiative of every individual. It's not only the CEO. I joined Ericsson and one month later said to everybody, 
everybody is CEO's is professional career, not only me. So everybody has a responsibility in this room to be the role model for the creation of the economy of more, tomorrow. And you can't delegate that. It's too easy to say it's the job of the government, it's the job of the private sector, it's the job of the funders, it's the job of everybody to take an initiative. But yes, it requires a lot of change. And it requires also your help to change the old people, which maybe have still an old way of thinking, saying, it took me 20 years to become there, and now the others would do the same thing. In flat organizations, what we have today doesn't work. So you also need to give input that they have to change. Choose your goal, be stubborn, be creative and innovative, Try to dare to try different aspects of the world, but I can guarantee you that if you dare to be part of that digital world, the reality in the future for you will be fantastic. I wish you all the best.